Okay. And Craigbot is in the chat. Uh, welcome. We have Matt here. GM Matt. I guess you don't go by Balau on SPG, right? Uh, no, no, I don't. But it's Balo, but it's all good. Ba- yeah. Balo, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, GM Balo is usually like the uh, the uh, handles and all that type of stuff. So yeah, I'm fucking fired. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, playing... it's such a common name. How could you possibly? <laughs> <laughs> what's the uh, what's the origin of that? What's uh, hung- uh, Hungarian. Oh, really? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, Fun fact: it, it means odd or weird. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, if you do D and D for a living, I guess that is considered odd or weird. Exactly. Right. My parents go, why are you doing this? I'm like, you're the one with the name. I mean, I just <laughs> living up to it. Yeah, exactly. Like, you're just fulfilling the prophecy, really. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're talking about uh, play-by-post. How many are you running right now? Oh, just one. Just oh, one. just one? Okay, yeah, yeah, what yeah. kind of game is it? Um, well, it's Dungeons & Dragons, and it's set in a Wild West type setting. Uh, oh, so it's... it's your custom thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so okay, that's the cool. one I'm working on called The Rock, and it's, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and it lends itself, because, you know, the West stuff is so descriptive anyway. So, yeah. you know, the wind, which way the wind's blowing, the smells, all those types of things. Uh, Tumbleweeds. I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that was, like, such a such a big thing in American literature was the penny novels about the West, because mm-hmm. it was so evocative. So it's, like, a really good thing for play-by-post. Yeah, that is that is hundred percent true. Um, yeah, I think uh, a lot of times when I'm thinking about the Wild West, and I know you're writing like your own setting, um, mm. which I presume to not have like a lot of the correct um, <laughs> problems uh, yeah. that you might find with uh, yeah. old. There's one reason why you know. I did my own thing too, right? Yeah. Where, um... Yeah, with all the problems, and that's why I was like, "Yeah, I'm not doing American West. I'm not even starting that. It's it's that it's that high fiction stuff." Right. And in fact, in our zero, I just say, "Listen, we're not doing this, and there's reasons why. Obviously, we know why, and let's just yeah. have fun with the fiction that it is, the heroic story that it is. Just like we try to do with medieval fantasy. Like we generally don't have people being burned as witches and other right. things. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. we we don't put in that in the high fantasy medieval world, and we can do that with the West too. Right, right, right. Yeah, um, there's a there's definitely a lot of baggage and like potential pitfalls um, in dealing with indigenous people in particular, right. um, and uh, of course black people. But um, and I guess I, there's so many. Di- everybody not white. <laughs> um, <laughs> Right, but, and I think yeah. that's that's why, like, you know, I was like, no one lives here. This is a thing where everyone is trying to get in here and find something for themselves. So it's really the idea that there's a limited resource, think like coal or gold, and everyone's attempting to get that, and that's made this very rough, like, type of thing. Yeah. Right? That's kind of the, the, the overarching idea of the world. And so there's not um, a little, and it's, a, it's, a, it's more Australia, actually. Um, with a lot yeah. of things there. Um, but again, that is indigenous issues as well. But not on that. <laughs> Just kind of, um, again, the more heroic type of idea. Yeah. Um, have you checked out Haunted West? Can't recommend it enough if you haven't. I have not. Um, I recommend it to everyone. Um, it is something that uh, was written by Chris Spivy. I believe I'm pronouncing their name correctly, but I'm not. I'm not... I don't have a good track record today for last names. Um, <laughs> but they also did Harlem Unbound, and Haunted West is um, a source book for... It's a, essentially like all of those other Western settings. It's like a weird West setting, but um, right. they did a ton of work uh, to make sure to uh, include the history from the perspective of the uh, Native people. And then yeah. also there's a there's a ton of stuff. I was actually talking to um, Jen about this when they were, uh, I think it was like a year or two ago when we were discussing this, uh, who is the sensitivity reader for a lot of the disability stuff. And a lot of the disability um, sort of 
culture that we have um, as far as what the government does for people with disability comes from the Civil War uh, veterans who had, you know, obviously been uh, damaged in a lot of different ways. Uh, but that is when a lot of the government facilitation of uh, a better life as a disabled person comes from and how it was normalized a lot of the time. And a lot of inventions came out of that era um, to sort of make people's lives a little bit better at the time. Um, that is not to say that disabled people today have a very good life or the government really takes care of them, but there's a lot of history to like the disabled community and um, those civil war vets for sure. Right. is where it started. Yeah. It's, but that's one thing with, uh, whenever you're dealing with the West, it's so, it's nearly impossible to separate that from the civil war. Uh, yeah. So much culture. That's why, like in my own thing, I was trying to figure like, what are those, what are those things that made that culture? Cause you want, in order, especially if you're doing a fantasy setting, you want it to feel as real as you can. So you have to have something that's, that, that takes the place of that because it's, it, there's things that made it as vile at times as, as, yeah. as it did. Right. And that's part of it. Part of it was frankly, hateful people running away from the government and, and inhabiting these areas and then more quote unquote, more different civilized people coming into it. And of course there's indigenous things with that, but that was also just, we just want to talk about, I guess the white people, the white people kind of go, the ones that generally were upset about things. They definitely took advantage of getting more and more West. And then, uh, as it became normalized, you had very different degrees of what people thought were decent and how that was, uh, you know, that made tension in of itself. Yeah. Yeah, um yeah, for sure. Um that's it's a lot of baggage. <laughs> and you gotta it's like tons of baggage, yeah. yeah it's, you, it's, you have to it's do it's so it's, much it's work. really it's really thick. And I think that's yeah. the thing, it's not simplified. You can't even podcast, you can't say one thing about it. It's it's right. There's so many influences that went in there and um That's why you should pick up Haunted West. It's like a, yeah. <laughs> it's a tome. It's massive. It's, I bet. It has so much historical uh, information in it to help you um, if you are looking and exploring any of those real things um, in like a mature way. Although like that might not be what you would like to do with your table just for anybody out there who's looking to do a kind of a, yeah. a Western. Yeah. yeah, it depends what you're trying to do. You know, I think that's, that's really like... And and for me, like I said, I stay away from American one. Sometimes for those reasons, one's really thick. And you had the, I think what I probably picked up on the most, as far as the themes, was the general idea of the classism and taking advantage of the poor. That was a huge theme in the expansion of the West. That was the railroad theme. Uh, that's right. coal mining, um, taking advantage of uneducated. Um, you know, you just look into like Appalachia and stuff like that for even how that started with that. So there's. Um, you know, the taking advantage of underprivileged people or people who are desperate or had nothing to do or luring people into a position of being that way. Like they actually had something and then they were lured to giving it away by promise of money or wealth or those types of things. Uh, right. It was really the, you know, that's probably the strongest pull if I had to pick one. Um, and not to say others might not get into it. So in my development right now, I'm starting from what I know, right? And what maybe I've experienced. And then there's this another stage where it's pulling in people like, hey, let's now let's make it wider once I'm, you know, a, 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 a little bit because it's still in very early. Right. This is still like my notes and stuff. Right. And in my play test with people, that's where a lot of that is coming in. Like someone who has different backgrounds than me, they go, I think this should be in there because, you know, they feel that really hard. And I'm like, OK, let's work on that together. Uh, so that's that's where in my games where I'm playing it, it's expanding because of that, which I really love because it's bringing in things that aren't me and my experience into it through the players, which is uh, how I'd prefer it to come anyway. Yeah, um, that is actually no shit how I started my first homebrew campaign. Um, it was called Crypt of the Ruby Dragon, and it was set in a place called Citadel before Radiant Citadel was released. <laughs> I'll just point that out. I don't oh, have yeah. like ev everybody names their fantasy city right. Citadel, though. I think <laughs> I think that was actually Mass Effect's name for the city too. Anyway, um, right? Wasn't it Citadel? I'm not sure. Okay. Um, 
Not a big Mass Effect fan? Okay. Well, we can't talk anymore. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, so, words. I started uh, working with my players about what they wanted to play. And that's just kind of the environment that was created with this uh, city that was pulled together from all these different yeah. planes of existence. And it was kind of a mishmash of everything. Um, and today... Sorry, my sinuses, like, that's why I'm doing... <laughs> Nobody on the podcast can see me just, like, viciously, like, rubbing my nose as I'm dealing with my sinuses. Um, mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, the vineyard kind of sprung up from from that and uh, was built off of that. And in the same way, that's why I'm bringing so many different people into the actual written material, the contributors and everything, because... If I were to write it just simply my way, then it would not be nearly as colorful or as good. Uh, yeah. So I think collaboration is probably one of the most powerful things we have, especially in the written word. So, yeah, and uh, so I had a, a good amount of players come in who were Mexican in heritage and Latin X, and mm-hmm. uh, so <clears throat> it was really interesting because I'm I told them as they started doing stuff like I'm really trusting you because <laughs> I wouldn't put some of this in from my perspective. Right. Naturally, right. like I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel like I'm versed in it enough to to do that. So if you're if you're kind of coming from your culture and they're like, no, OK, cool. You know, and it's very uh, a type of thing. And I even decided to kind of move on the Western idea uh, because of the players as well. I, I was feeling a strong pull to either kind of like a uh, 19th century kind of like um, police crime kind of detective type of stuff setting where people were going through that or like a western i was like these two things i could like be really excited about and have a lot of fun with uh as a creator and then i was like what y'all want to (laughs) play and you know let's go from there yeah that makes sense um i think it you're gonna publish this eventually right just as long as you have the sensitivity readers hit it and like yeah you know? That's definitely part of the process, right? That's one of those things of yeah. As you get closer, as you get kickstarting, as you get the funded. Okay, let's start to, you know, or you know, it's funny through some of the games. There's a budget for that. Like, okay, let's get these because I hundred percent agree. Um, you know, you want, and I expect it to get ri- to to get ripped up, <laughs> and 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 redone. Right, that's an expectation because I understand. Well, no matter who's coming into it, like we're all limited, right? And there's reason why right. there's people who've made their profession sensitivity reading. Like they're there to know the stuff. They're there to really have that those ideas, and so uh, that's a good thing to make use of. Yeah, for sure. And then, really, it's just a, a double check on some of the potential um, blind spots that you might have right. in your writing and. They're blind a lot spots because we can't see them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you're, I'm not going to be able to tell if something's problematic if I have no experience or perspective that would deem that to be problematic. Which for white people is a lot of stuff. So yeah. it's just how it is. You <laughs> yeah. know, we haven't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, I think I think all of us are trying. All of us are going okay. We can recognize, but you know, from not, you know, it's 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 you're never going to get there, right? And that's with anything you're doing. You know, I think. You know, I was just hiring someone to do my logo and stuff and finally got someone to do my art and I was graphic yeah. designing for people and clients, right? Right. And to understand like, you know what, I'm doing this DM thing. I'm outsourcing things at a certain level because I can't do them as good as someone who just does this anymore. Right. Um, you know, we're there, you know, and so 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 it, you know, that's just part of it, you know. And that that's a really interesting point I want to get into because this is a pro GM podcast. Yeah. When did you start outsourcing stuff and how is your process for that like what was the indication to you that you wanted to start outsourcing stuff i think when the first thing i really did <clears throat> i think for me it really started i think to be when for me on spg there was just I, I i i saw i think Really, it was just the idea that more people were doing the GM stuff, and it became, I think, clear that I wanted people to 
you know, we were kind of redo this. I got to really think. I wasn't ready for this particular question. I haven't thought too much about that. You know, basically, I realized I needed better. So the first thing was the art. And I realized, you know, I do need thumbnails uh, that portray my games. If I need to get a few influx of players, I had some just because of life stuff. You know, you move, you lose jobs, all this stuff. People had to cut something. And so, uh, I, you know, I, I needed to pick up uh, maybe three players. And I was like, you know, I knew, uh, the field was bigger than when I started. And so I'm like, you know, we need to get noticed somehow. And on top of that, I think myself also going, you know, I have been successful, uh, blessed, I would call it, like just, you know, flash lucky that I'm able to do these things and I'm able to outsource. And I think I want to support people who are following their dreams as well because GMing was a dream of mine. So I think that was the two things. I had started from, uh, I have no money. <laughs> Um, I'm barely supporting my family. I'm overworked, um, dying. And so I was just doing what I could to get my listings up when I started. It was just yeah. to get my listings going. And then at one point, I just realized I'm not there anymore. Yeah. Um, things have progressed, thankfully. Um, I am so happy they have. And a natural outflowing of gratitude is generosity towards others and to help others. Right. And so that's, I think, where it really started for me. Now I really think about it. Ultimately, it was just a sense of gratitude of where I was. And then realizing, like, you know, it can't hurt to have stuff that looks good on the listings. Like, that is a, a practical thing. And so that's a good way to start. And I believe, I think, even the first one, yeah, I had done it, just happened to be um, one particular night. Uh, we had people move nights off of. So they just went to different nights because of their schedule changed. And then I need to get some players in. And we also just kind of started a really huge arc at the same time and was like, okay, let's let's get some art for this arc so I can advertise this arc more effectively because it was high level. So the idea that you're going to come in and get like three arcs of story in a wild mount game wasn't overly possible anymore. So I wanted to change that in my listing anyway. And so I was like, you know, let's, let me write it differently and let me get like good art for it. Um, and so that, that's kind of where it started as far as where I indicate it. Um, a lot of times it's just kind of cost versus my own time, you know, and, and what I need, like for my one shots that I just am running soon, they're, um, basically for what it was worth and what I kind of wanted to do, I could do, I could do the graphic I wanted for that in like five minutes and be happy. Cause it's a, you know, it's, the blip and it's done and so i wouldn't pursue that it's not going to be up there very long um and again it depends on where i have a strong vision for something and where i feel like my ability is um but for the other art i was like man i want this to be epic because it's an epic story it's also reflecting for right. some of the players year and a year and a half worth of their time and money spent so it was yeah. also kind of a gift to them so yeah, and that's where most you, of my stuff flows from is, is gifting things to my players for me it's really just, like my players would love to see art of what they did and i just want to see that um i'm doing a uh another artist is doing six characters because we're doing an influences of wild mount and they made these amazing characters so i have an artist doing six of the portraits and putting that into the art i think that's going to be done in a week or two and it was the same thing like man i just want to show them i love them and and you know obviously make good art for a listing and not entirely uh selfless <laughs> but i do want to give right. that to people you know yeah do you still do the miniatures yeah 100 percent. okay yeah if you just want to explain that to to people and what because that was one of the first things that i noticed like and, and just to everyone who's listening um matt's been on since i've been around on spg matt's been one of the top ranked gms if not like the number one for the longest time uh, i believe currently sitting at number one and that amount of consistency was very um, interesting to me, especially starting out. And when I was reaching out and starting to talk to a lot of pro GMs, um, I would just go ahead and point out that most of the top pro GMs at the time did not want to talk to me. However, Matt was all about talking with me, <laughs> like sharing like what Matt does for their community. And yet Matt is still on top. So like, obviously like there was no secret sauce 
other than hard work. Um, but yeah, if you want to share about like what you do with the miniatures and stuff like that, I think it's a great value add. Um, and I think for your situation it works really well and potentially there's other GMs out there who might consider it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, you really bring up something good as far as like people think if there's, you know, quote unquote, the secret sauce and that type of stuff and it is really just working. And I think sometimes people get a little too, uh, What's too it? proud of too proud of themselves. Become, become uh, the number I, one GM with this one special trick. No, it's not. That's not how it works, bitch. Like, yeah, fucking and, work. <laughs> but even when people don't want to talk to others, right? A lot of time they're like, someone's like, "Oh, you give away your secrets." I'm like, "There's nothing secret, like other than, like, nothing secret. Actually, just mostly don't be a horrible person." You think I have <laughs> nuclear secrets? That fucking, <laughs> I have like nuclear yeah. secrets that I use in order to craft the perfect game. No, no number, I... <laughs> number two, maybe read read the Dungeon Master Guide. It actually tells you a lot of things. Um, <laughs> That's, yeah, yeah, you just provide the link to the Dungeon Master Guide. I mean, there's, so, I mean, I love everybody. It's just sometimes there's questions, literally, I'm like, wow, you've not read the Dungeon Master Guide. <laughs> Play Dungeons and Dragons. Um, yeah. Because it clearly says this in chapter one, but it's okay. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and I hadn't, and actually, full disclosure, I hadn't when I started my Pro DM stuff either, so I don't... No, no worries. Um, you know, I think I didn't read the whole thing. Um, you know, that was one of the things that time afforded me. Because, uh, but anyway, to the mini question, I'll, I'll do that. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, when I started, it was it was very much like, I guess, a dream. Like, who who could really do pro DM? And even kind of this negative sense of certainly nobody with a family to support. Right. right. And, and, and I, you know, I didn't know a lot about the, 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 the industry of the world and do a lot of research on that, but just, you know, you get, you, you know, you get, at least for me, I got negative talk into my head just for myself and, and having to overcome me mostly. And so I decided early on that if I was going to do it, I wanted to run it like my table that I run at home. And yeah. if this is going to be a thing, if I'm going to do this, then, um, and it was already replacing something I was, I, I loved doing, but I could no longer do, uh, based on, uh, two of my family's developed disabilities. They needed me at home. Um, so I couldn't no longer do this thing that had brought me great joy for over a decade. And right. I, I wasn't going to replace it with something that didn't, um, I didn't, I, that, because because of therapy actually as a therapist told me you're going to hate your family like you can't do this like we don't you know as selfless as we try to be you ultimately can't do this you're going to develop negative stuff and um you know and i think a lot of times we hear stories sometimes of the past of negative parents you go to and they kind of did that like there was this mm -hmm. give up for your family give up this thing you love and then you end up punishing your family for it so it was yeah. you know there's there's a lot of unhealthy things that came from a good place but ultimately ended in very unhealthy and awful things. So right. I don't want to be that person. So anyway, um, so I thought about my table and I give gifts to my, my, my home tables. I was a gift giver. Uh, you know, you call that a love language. And so from the very beginning, I was like, I want to give gifts. And there's a principle that I learned as I started, I guess, community building, because uh, I was in ministry. And so uh, a huge part of that's community building. And so, you know, part of that I realized as things went from a more physical age to a more digital age, because I got to ride that as far as how that hit church world. Um, people began valuing physical things way more than they ever did because everything was so digital. That mm -hmm. that if you can do something substantial to somebody, if you can write a handwritten letter, like people just ooze over that because it's it's so uncommon like we even have like nfts and all these things that that um are good and i i'm a fan of the digital world but it there is a missing of the concrete at times in people's lives and you can feel that um and so especially if you're trying to think of you know ultimately dungeons and dragons for me i wanted it to be friends around a table and new you know um and we aren't going to have the concrete idea of, of, of being physically there or even hearing each other and uh, totally we can't see everything everybody does. So there's a lot of that concreteness we're already missing. And so for me, I was really like, what can I do? And with a few other things um, <clears throat> uh, that um, ways I want to do my game, one thing was what's an easy thing to do. And it's like, well, if I want to make a mini anyway, 
because I wanted to do cameras. That was kind of part of the outcropping was, um, I was going to do, uh, show my sets. I just wasn't into the, uh, VTTs personally. And some of that, actually, I'll say, cause, cause I know this is for DMS, uh, that really was where my life was and what I could and could not do and feel like where I could do. Right. And I was building this also doing my other job. And, uh, my spouse was able to paint and do the minis. Uh, they were not able to look at a computer screen. Um, and I certainly did not have the time to do it with everything else I was trying to do. Um, I suppose was unable to help with a lot of family stuff. So I was doing full-time parent stuff, full-time job stuff, trying to start a new business to kind of replace things. So for me, um, the fact that they could help with a thing that defined the thing I was going to do, right. <laughs> like what, like, boom, end of story, no matter what, how, what can you whatever. do with means? Yeah. Yeah, what you can do with what you have. And so I was like, boom, that's going to be that thing. And so, because there's a lot of like, you know, sometimes DMs will ask like, do you suggest? I'm like, I don't know. Just look at what you have and what you can do. Um, Because that's what I did. And that's how I answered these questions. And so, um, and then it came, what can I, so when it came to the doing minis for my players and sending them. So after six weeks for um, open campaigns, and I think I, I, I put it at the end of the adventure, or um ones that are modules the ones that are modules i'll go hey at the end of the whole module i'll go ahead and send this to you but yeah. um, otherwise it's like six weeks and so um that became a little gift i would give uh just to kind of say thank you and so it was they design a mini uh we would print it that we would paint it and say we it's really my spouse and uh you know press two on the printer essentially uh and paint and, and using the same color schemes isn't too crazy. And so it was a natural outcropping of a workflow that was part of it. Um, because I think when you're gift giving, you do want to think of what can I do that's not going to kill me. You know, I don't want to be angry at my gift. Right. Um yeah. people sometimes overextend. Uh, a lot of times our tradition of the winter holidays is overextension. Yeah. And then if people don't thank us a lot, yeah, and if we, people don't think of us enough, we get upset at them, right? Yeah. Or, or how dare you do this to me a month later? I did this to you know. You don't yeah. want to be that way. You want to give out of overflow generally, because then you then any appreciation is bonus, um, right? So, um, at least for me, <laughs> not much to that's tell a, what to do. Um, that's a that's a great business model, though, honestly, uh, because you want to make sure that a you can afford it for your business. Mm-hmm. And then B, like, does it make sense to actually give that thing? Um, can you sustain it? Are you going to be able to do it in such a way that you're still going to enjoy the process and enjoy being around that person afterward if they don't appreciate it? I think these are very deep questions that are very important that people may not be prepared for because there's a lot of people who might offer like art or something for their characters after a certain point, and I'm just like, eh, are you sure? It's going to take you like five to ten hours to do that, or however long, sometimes 30 for some artists if you're making it highly detailed and high quality. And I'm like, what if they just don't care for it? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh. Then you yeah. just like, you just labored for 10 to 30 hours on this piece of art that they don't give a shit about. You know what I mean? Like, and that's, you know, it, it's it's sort of like, uh, what, what's the best use of your time? That's like the number one right. thing, especially when yeah. people like consult with me. How can I best spend my time? Well, making money. That's how. <laughs> that's the best use of your time. If yeah. you're and not so, making money, yeah. Showing appreciation is is part of that too, right? You you keep people by by showing appreciation partially. So yeah, but you have to really um you have to think through that now like because because like now the minis uh i believe they take five to ten hours to ultimately do um uh not even counting printing because um they they put so much um my partner there she put so much time into it and she has them you know color color it and it is like perfected to their color tries to match what's on screen it's a work of love for her so and that's part of it too, is that she she loves that, and that's her her way. And so so interesting. So it's comparing those two things, like art versus mini. One, I'm like, you design your mini, you put the colors on there, and then we copy that, right? So 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 first of all, it's your creation that we're just kind of making a copy of. 
But then, yeah, and I think, too, if someone doesn't like it, that's fine. And if they don't, they're probably not saying it anyway because there's probably other things they don't like, um, and, and it's okay. Um, but, yeah, you have to be okay with it. And I think um, the other thing to me was – it's actually a trick – Part part of the part of it was knowing I wanted to give something after six weeks at first, because especially starting out, why are you even going to risk me? Why are you going to risk you know staying with me? Um, certainly, if you're shopping around, you're going to want to give me one week or two weeks or whatever. And I also know about myself, so a lot of my stuff was self discovery. I am kind of an acquired taste in as a person. Um, and I've always found that to be true. And, and, and usually people need to be around me a few times and then they go generally, Oh yeah, that's my friend. I love hanging out with him, you know, whatever. And I love hanging out with that person. And, and, but, but I'm not the first, like you meet me once and you want to be my friend forever or whatever. I've never been that person. I know a lot of people who are. And so I was like, I want people to stick with me. Uh, and, and generally I'm like, if six sessions, if, if you don't, if you're not down with me, then you probably do need to go at that point. But I also think that that's a fair time for us to know each other to determine if this is going to work for a year or more in a D and D. I, yeah. I don't think one or two is fair. I, I really don't. I think that six is good, and so to incentivize you to to wait it out with me for six, well, at least I get this hand paid in mini, you know, and then you get to see, yeah. you know, and of course, if people are playing with me, they get to see the camera because they get to see the type of mini art we do so it's not like yeah. you're surprised that it looks it's literally you see your painted mini beforehand anyway because yeah. it's moving about the board so you're like that's the yeah. one i'm getting like, like right. there's yeah, no yeah. Mis mystery yeah so but yeah so that's that's for you know it, it was wanting to be generous so again it's generosity paired with strategy right it's like i want to do this thing how can i make it like you're saying making money how can i do it so it benefits the long-term strategy going like let's have them six weeks um, six weeks is time to make relationships. Six weeks is enough time to kind of really figure this out. You know, I feel someone does like me by six weeks. We're definitely not for each other. That's totally cool. Um, you know, I'm not going to feel slighted. Uh, when people go after one week, I'm like, oh man, I don't know. Maybe I just had a cold or whatever. But <laughs> Yeah. I, I, you know, I, the most recent people that I've lost that hasn't been like scheduling or something like that has been like, they saw that my prices were increasing. And that they were brand new. I actually had like three new players who had just joined and they saw my, that my prices were increasing. So obviously one week isn't enough for my, for me to convince people that I'm worth my new price if they like came in at a certain price. But I ain't too worried about that. I mean, like, obviously I don't think I'm going to lose 90% of my clientele <laughs> when my prices increase in December. Um, but yeah, I think for the most part, the biggest drop off for second week, you're right. Uh, at least anecdotally for for my situation as well. And then at four weeks, eight weeks, and then again like seasonal, quarterly. Um, that's that's how my stuff works generally. For you, um, because I think you do homebrew campaigns, I honestly think that encourages a lot more loyalty than what I do. Um, I have just started in homebrew. Um, and I've noticed a very big difference in just like the way that the players interact. Um, and of course, all of these are private games. So they've, they're, they're my community games. So they've already played with me. They know what the right. game is. Like they know what, you know, what to expect. Um, they know what they're getting into more or less. So I feel like there's a great deal more loyalty for games like that. But yeah, it, it's yeah. more difficult to get off the ground, especially when you're new to do homebrew. Um, because a lot of the time the question is what the fuck is the game and <laughs> to, uh, really run a really, uh, a good homebrew game. A lot of the time that is what do the players want to do? So yeah. you're, you're kind of left in this no person's land where you're just out in the middle of the desert. Like I'll let you play what you want. And then people are like, but how do we know that you're good or this is yeah. a good idea? So it's very difficult, I think, for advertising's sake to get a homebrew game off the ground for that reason, because it's not clearly defined, which is why when I talk to people who are running homebrew campaigns, like, no, you need to take all that shit out about how, like, you just will make the players happy by, like, <laughs> let, giving them choices. They don't have a choice when they join your campaign. 
this is the pipeline story that they are doing when they first enter the campaign. You have a prepared introduction to your world, right? That is what the story is in the advertisement then. Because you can't just tell people, like, it's a sandbox world. Like, nobody knows what that is, first of all, anymore. And then right. secondly, um, you want to get away from, like, a very casual hobbyist, like, show up to the game, low invest, show up to the game store, low investment type of game anyway. Because these are boutique services, really. So, yeah. yeah. And I found, you know, from, from my start, you know, it was... Again, I was figuring out what I wanted to do. Part of it was a it was it was thing it was getting rejected by a pro DM company. Uh, helped me understand what I wanted to do. Uh, they were like, "Hey, try to do this," and I got some feedback from them uh, when they rejected me, which was really nice for them. Of them, actually, they spent about an hour rejecting me, which I really appreciated because they kind of said, "This is where we feel like you could grow, and this is you know all these things, and try out again in six months or whatever." And for one thing, it made me realize that the type of D&D they wanted me to play, I had no interest in doing. Yep. And, and that's and I, what happened. And it was good, though, because it made me go, when I start on SVG, and they also, the one that introduced me to SVG, they said, hey, get, get, you know, cut your teeth here, maybe. And so it was a really good deal. And then realizing that from the beginning, I, have, I am not good at this part of D&D. I don't know if I want to be. Like, I just right. have no, no taste for it. And so, so I don't. Um, to, you know, and now I'm probably better at that, but just to start out again, where I'm like, I need something that's going to fuel me. I need something that I'm going to love doing because, um, this is out of energy. I really don't even have in my life right now. Like I like of, of, of where I was, I needed to love every second of it. And so, um, and I knew that otherwise I'm not going to, I'm not gonna be able to do it. Um, and kind of knowing even my personal limitations of like, you know, people just, just put, just work harder at it. I'm like, I won't be able to like, you know, there's a point to where my energy will bottom out and I can't do it. And again, therapy is yeah. great to let you know those things. Um, yeah. but, uh, so when I was starting that, so that's where, you know, for me, I loved watching critical role. I was just a huge fan of it. It kind of got me into D and D because I was vampire, the masquerade word of darkness person for decades. Yeah. And it. You know what I loved about that was the stories, and so I was like, "Oh, D and D is about story again, and about role play again a little bit." Which to me, it wasn't uh, the '90s, at least the people I was around. And so, um, you know, people, you know, the big joke was, you know, someone would go, "Oh, I want to shake this person's hand when you're playing Vampire the Masquerade," and they're like, "You just shake their hand. You don't need to roll for it. This isn't D and D." Was what yeah. everyone would say. Um, <laughs> And so, but, but I think those shows like Crit Row and a lot of the podcasts that came from them kind of breaking the ground there, um, really introduced story to it. So I was like, well, I could do that. And then I realizing that, you know, again, I think, you know, being able to go, you know, they made an official wizards book, you know, that I could say I'm running this world. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to run wild mount because it's official. Now I'm not going to steal from them. They're the one who made the book and it's on a, like a license that I can use. And, and run games out of um and so uh being able to make an open world with that and say hey we're going to use the resources that matt mercer and the team made for this to make this homebrew world and make it from scratch uh was a little different than what i see like what you're saying so people just go oh just whatever you want and at least for me, it was like, well, sort of, we're going to use the heroic chronicle and we're going to craft this with the tools that were made from this book. And then we're going to go forward by this person you like and by these people that you think are creative and make good stories. And so that I think was helpful because people were like, oh yeah, I want that experience. I want the three arcs of my character in there uh, mm-hmm. based on this. Right. And so that was kind of what I st- started with. And it's, I mean, you know, that's what I did uh, for, you know, 20, 30 years as a table by side of the table. Yeah. I was always include my characters backstories. Always. Did. That's just what I was. And so that there was a product that I could say, Hey, here's this product. Here's this thing. So you clearly know that it's, it's not just off the top of my head. And it was within an expertise that I developed over the course of many years. That's like, great. Right. And so that, those two things aligned very nicely. Um, yeah. And I love that tool, by the way, <laughs> or Chronicle that just, because it helps the be anything to, yeah, but let's like bring it in and connect to the world in a way that if, you know, whatever tower gets destroyed, 
you, you know, drew that one time or your mom took you there or whatever. Like it just brings that into it, you know, and, 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 and destroy some of the murder hobo stuff that sometimes can destroy games though. Some murder hobo is always fun occasionally here or there, but, um, you know, it, it makes things matter. Um, and in home rule, that's probably the biggest thing. Like things have to matter in characters or in any world rather. I mean, if, you know, I'm working on the Dragonlance thing and if it's like, if, if, you know, you don't care about this world and it being destroyed as a character, like why, why are you going to risk your life? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think, the Heroic Chronicle for, for me was a huge help in a lot of different ways, but at the same time, I don't know. I I personally really struggle with getting um, long-term character story arcs to, to work uh, with this, with pro uh, players or payers that are... Uh, blah, 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 or it's players who are paying a pro DM <laughs> in a professional environment. Because a lot of the time, these people, uh, they either don't stick around or whenever I have sort of hinged a plot point on their characters, I've always been burned. So I just don't, uh, maybe it's like, maybe I'm doing the wrong thing. But like, a lot of the time when I try to incorporate people's backstories, um, and I make it a plot point, it just, they just drop off. I, I'm not sure. Uh, and that's a natural progression, I think, for a lot of pro games is that people just rotate out after a certain while. Mm -hmm. But for me, I think making the plot points complete within instead of having it be like an overarching thing that lasts a long time. If I could just address the, the backstory in like one to three sessions at some point, that's been more effective for me than, yeah. than to like. Yeah. yeah. To be clear, that's probably more what I do, right? So it's not like somebody oh, okay, has okay. six sessions of it. It's it's just that it includes it in there, and it for me, um, for one, I I I have had the same thing that you're describing. Um, you know, you you hint something on somebody and they don't show up, or they don't, or, or they drop the game, and you're like, yeah, thanks. Um, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, or even more frustratedly, actually, is is you complete it, then they drop the game. Um, because <laughs> now everyone has what sat I wanted. through yeah. there. You've you've got these paid players who pay just as much as this person who've now sat through this and sacrificed a little bit of their paid time, basically, to yeah. to to do this. And now they're like, you know, now you got to now 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 there's hurt we all have to deal with, you know. And it's like, man, you did not do us favors. And so, right. um, so yeah, I think you know, for me, it's. You know, with that book in particular, Explorer's Guide to Wild Mount, it is so rich that as I tell the players, like, listen, like, I have on every continent stories, right? I've read it and there's just stories all around here. And that's part of, yeah. of, of my own strengths. And so it's like, cool, I just have all this. So wherever you want to go, like, there's connecting points, there's things we're going to be able to do. Uh, what are we feeling really hard here? And so we kind of, you know, I think my first game, right? We landed on Jorhas. Mm -hmm. Which is hilarious because they spent a week in Jorhas, then left and right. ended up in like the yeah. Menagerie Coast. So I was like, okay, cool. And so we, but we figured it out because, again, the nice thing about that book um, and, and uh, Taldori one as well is like they just, it doesn't even matter. Like, because they're just, they, they've, they've filled it with so much content that they, that, um, you know, for me, very comfortable to do such an open thing because you can always find something to link back to because they filled it up for you. Um, but yeah, I think with the stories, it's, you know, you find out where the plot points are. You use them as hooks for the most part. It's here's the hook for that, right? And then I did learn right away that you 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 pretty much need to, if you're going to do that, I need, at least for me, I need to usually make it so it hooks at least two to th half the party in a personal way, right? Yeah. Because because if everything is the party's in it to help this other person in the party, that gets older or fast. So you want multiple things there. So it's always about drawing the line. So in the Heroic Chronicle, I'll even go, hey, could that be both of you? Did you both have the same experience? Like, you know, hey, three of you road got turned into a bear or whatever it says. Um, you know, was this a group thing that happened to you that you knew so that these these hooks and, and these things we're developing are communal 
in, in, in nature, right? Um, like if everyone just rolls it and sends it to me separately. So I always did that as a team, as a group, usually when I was starting uh, those games. Um, and that was back when I do when I did free session zeros, which I no longer do, um, because they actually weren't a good way to get people to play. Why don't you do free session zeros? Yeah, <laughs> let's talk about this. <laughs> yeah, um, I did. I did at first because to me, well, basically, I just what I looked at SBG, it looked like everyone was doing them, and I had no idea what I was doing. I just wanted to run games, so I just was like, sure, free session zero, whatever. Um, and I didn't get burned or anything like that. It just, it just, what, what, what would happen occasionally is that someone might not show up to the first session and that was fine. But I realized that I was doing most of my work for free in that session zero because it was a yep. lot of energy and I was more exhausted with that than the first. And you have enough people leave after session two and you realize, man, I've put in maybe 20 hours and I've gotten paid for like, you know, less than half of that. Yeah. And that's, that's not sustainable, um, to, you know, for, but, but also just, you know, I, I think a lot for me was confidence, right? I was this person trying to start. And then after a while, I'm like, my session zeros are worth paying for. Um, and <laughs> That took me personally a very long time to be able to say about myself. Um, yeah, because I mean, I don't. I mean, I was I was starting uh, GM stuff. I was recently coming off of that period of my life of some very negative mental health stuff, and so right. I'm I'm in recovery a little bit of mental health, and uh, especially then, and so self confidence zero, and so to be able to say anything good about myself took me a long time to be able to make something good about me. Um, like I was, you could have, you could have knocked me over with a feather. I think when you contacted me and said, Hey, you're on that top list of recommended. I was like, <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. I because it was I like just, March or April or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I just, again, had no, like, cause again, that's where I was coming from as a person of just thinking of right. thinking I'm not worth anything to the world. And then, right. um, um, I'm not good at anything. I'm a fair, this, whatever, all this stuff. That's not true about any of us. Right. And right. so, um, so I was seeing, you know, seeing someone counseling. And so anyway, so just the idea of like, what, you know, and so it was just really interesting to me, but, uh, but yeah, so that's why it took me a while. So that was, that was a confidence thing. That's why some people go like, well, I don't know if I, if I can charge for that. I'm like, well, if you can't run a game without doing your fresh and zero for free, I guess go ahead and do it for free. Um, I don't think you need to, and I don't think it's a selling point, frankly, because I think either someone sold by your game or not, but if you are going to go in feeling better about yourself, if you do a free session zero, then it's probably worth it. If you can get players and if it, you know, and, and that type of thing, but do you need to know? Um, it's, you know, and cause, cause my journey is so why a little, I, I tend to support. My big thing is what do you need to do in order to feel really comfortable at your game? Because my journey was all about that. It's what, what must be there for me yeah. to be this pro DM that I want to be and come off yeah. this way and, and do what I need to do and do it confidently um, and not be like, Oh, are you sure everyone, this is okay. You know, just go, Hey, this is and not in a, in a mean way, but just kind of go, Hey, this is what we're going to do. We can, if you have questions, you have something that we want to change, let me know. We'll think about it, you know, whatever. And, and, and have that. Cause you do need to lead your table. Um, yeah. when, when you run it, you know, and uh, for me, that has to come from, from, from inside of myself. Right. And I need to set up an environment where I can rely on that. And even if someone who knows more than me is telling me, you don't need to do that, that doesn't help me in the moment to feel insecure. So right. I need to feel secure at my table. So whatever someone needs to do to do that, I would say, go for it. Okay. Great advice. I would like to point something out though. Um, Please. So, <laughs> um, I'm just gonna go ahead. So, what was your or ask a question really to point something out? Because I think I know the answer. What was the drop rate during your session zeros or free? Was it higher or lower than it is currently? A good question. Um, doesn't have to be scientific. Yeah, no, <laughs> just... I, 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 I hate to do so, but I actually, I actually think it. I don't think I saw a difference. Okay. So, so I would say it's not I, I don't I don't I don't think I saw a difference in it. Um 
I think it was just yeah. Not the same. Let me. Yeah, I think it's about the same. I don't think there was a difference. So again, no, but like I, I said, I don't think there's a benefit to it. I don't think there's necessarily a negative to it. Um, but again, I, I when I say that, I want to acknowledge that I think from when I started to especially when um, I think you started, things changed. So, yeah. so, 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 so I want to take that back. I have no idea if there, <laughs> if it's negative or positive, because I, I want to acknowledge that that. That there was, which is part of the reason I even started when I did. I don't think I was even ready necessarily. It just, I had enough experience to know from missing a few other opportunities in my life to get this is fresh. The time to do this is now. Yeah. Because of the time, right? It was like, it was still, right. and I actually, I still think it is, I, you know, I think, you know, there's, there's ages, it's still relatively easy to get into. Um, it won't be this way forever, I think, but uh, um, I, you know. I, I just got like like it's for me now. People are just starting to understand what this is and and like get into it. Like start it, you know, start 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 what you're doing. But yeah, I, I didn't see a, I didn't see a I didn't see a difference. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to point that out for like listeners because this is like the the top GM right who isn't sure whether or not it was more effective because if it was effective, you would have told me that there was a huge difference. You right. know what I mean? Like. In getting more players or retaining them because it that's yeah. why like you I do said, something it was, like that. It, it that's, wasn't about effectiveness for me, right? right. It was simply about me yeah, feeling yeah, yeah. good. It wasn't about no, no, no. is this gonna get me more? And so Correct. so yeah. yeah. It's taken away from like obviously like, you know, more power to you and you should do what fits you individually in your right. business. But yeah, but for like, starting DM, if you're like, Am I gonna get more or less people? Probably not. Like it doesn't just, matter. Yeah, like get doesn't paid. Matter. Uh, yeah, um, get paid instead. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, because because again, if you see no difference, like that's enough reason to get paid, right? If there's Correct, no difference, yeah. like like it's like let's see any difference, and the only difference is I'm not getting paid for my time. Um, that's not great. So, not. um, especially when you're trying to build, because for me, you know, that yeah. first those those first months, you know, I'm doing this other job, and I'm doing this, and every cent that I'm doing from pro DMing is going into build my pro DMing. You yeah. know, and so and that's another reason why I didn't do um, some other things like art and whatever, because I was still getting the cameras I wanted and I was getting this that I wanted. And, you know, and again, part of it was for me to feel confident. And I think and, and, and again, if someone else was like, I need to, I need great art to feel confident. Cool. Then, you you know, because my priority list was for me. It was what do I need? Because in my life, experience has taught me that more. I think a lot has to do with how I feel. Yeah. And. Um, I am an emotionally based person. And so I need to feel good or I will not give people the best product. And yeah. so I need to start with that and work the thing up. And, um, and incidentally, uh, having the good art now, I like will say again, outsourcing that has made me feel better, but that wasn't, yeah. that that's a later thing, right? For me, it was right. The initial things for me was more like, okay, it doesn't look like I have a webcam anymore. I have something a little better. And and stuff like that. Yeah. And again, that was based on the product I was, I, I, I decided to make. But. I'm just going to go ahead and point out that that shit drove me wild. That you were like at the top of the list and you had the same shitty, not a <laughs> shitty image, but like the same fucking image. From free SPG, image that SPG free image. provides. Not altered no at all. Not no. no editing. The same image for every single campaign. And you were just, you were just killing it. So like that, that's the other thing that I want to uh, make sure. And I, uh, mention and point out is that you talk a lot like uh, a creative would an artist or uh, someone who's like an actor or something and you're worried about how can I create the best product and that is 100% the best advice that anyone starting their business for pro GMing could take is that you need to worry about you running a great game first everything else is secondary and 100%. Yeah, everybody, like, and that's the thing, like, because when you get people in your game, which will naturally happen over time because SPG does such a great job at bringing people to your listing, eventually, you're going to keep people if you're running a great game. If you're worried yeah. about all this other stuff instead of running a great game, then you're just not going to keep people right. once they get in because there's other options out there. And that's, like, really what pro GMing exposes about gms and makes them feel very self-conscious in a lot of ways is that there's other options out there 
you're not like married to the people who you met at the game store anymore. Like you can't hide behind anything. Like if people don't like your game, they fucking leave. Yeah. Like it's over for you. <laughs> like yeah, you're dead to them. Mean- because they're paying money, you know, and yeah. it's it, it, it's it's great in that it helps. I think us as DMs be better than ever, and want to be better because we we know that it enables us to be like somebody was like, wow, all these resources because I was providing resources to them about like magic item prices or whatever in my game. And I said, you know what's a great thing about it is because of this, I can buy every stupid one dollar like thing that somebody made that is useful because I do this for a living. I have a budget for it. You know, when I'm at my table, I can't do that. I can't just like, you know, I, you know, eventually I run out of the Patreons I can support. Eventually I run out, right. but, but because I can make this, I can have these people who are killing like, so that's, and actually the outsourcing was so funny. I guess I first, now that I think about it, I first outsourced uh, some dungeon stuff. Cause I think I did a, uh, I think it was DM Dave or something like that. That okay. I first was subscribed to them because I was a Patreon. So I started to subscribe to different Patreons, different DMs Guild things, like because it's really uh, great to be able to go, like, I can facelift this to be an Exandria, or I can facelift this to be whatever and change monsters around a little bit. But it gives me the CR guide. Right. Um, you know, I go for people who write for modern DD. And I, and I and I mean that in that like to me, some of the early stuff, if you go by the DMs guide, like will have you underpower encounters. Or online play, in my opinion. Um, so there's people who don't do that, and and you know, this is what kind of what I look for is challenging and not just hack and slash as well. Um, but but yeah, so I think I think that's it's so inter- yeah, I, and and it really does that. I think when you're making your thing and you're deciding this, like it's really about you being the best DM, yeah, uh, that, that 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 you can be, you know, and it's because and for me. And again, this has to do with my own neuroses. For me, I had to couch that in that because that's the best way to serve my people. Right. And, right. and, and that's, that, it, that's a key part that I really want to shift us towards because we're talking about you and community building. And that's the number one thing because I did play for that short period with you just to like, I got to see what Matt's doing. I got to see right. what Matt's doing that's like, like, do they have a secret sauce or are they just running really great games? So it turns out, spoiler, like just running great games. And then um, also does a really good job at like building community and like interacting with their players and stuff like that. So I fundamentally changed the way that I was running my server because I, after seeing how you ran things, I was like, well, if I don't shift a lot of my time away from just like trying to be efficient and instead being more personable, um, my business is not going to survive long term. Because we have this example over here of someone who does that and like they don't put as much time into advertising. I would much rather move my uh, my mop, my business model over to more personal tables and people that are with me long term, just like Matt does. And talking with some other uh, GMs like Hunter, for instance, who has no public listings anymore. Like it's all community games. And I'm just like, that's the fucking dream. Like, I want to just play with the same people and just have that go on for as long as possible um, because that's sustainability. That's, like, that's reliable income as opposed to, like, you're just churning through all these players and you can have a great game, but if you're not, like, getting these players that are going to have also a, uh, what do you call that, Um, a steady schedule... And yeah. like the commitment to go long term, that's a huge difference in what your pro GMing is going to look like. And I think that just comes after time. Like you're gonna, you're gonna sort through or you're gonna filter through a lot of players on the way towards like finding those long term sustainable players. Yeah. That it, that isn't just say. Yeah, because you're not the DM for everybody, right? No one yeah. is, right? And, exactly. and there's like I, I, you know, I just had this player who came on and they, um. You know they were hypercritical of me afterwards, and you know, and uh, and and Get they're here, bitch. <laughs> well, I don't need your money. <laughs> well, there was a thing, and and they were they were hypercritical, but in a, in in a way in which like they weren't mean about it. So she was probably the most respectful hypercritical I've ever had. So it was kind of cool. <laughs> like they weren't insulting, let's say. Um, right. You know, they were they were just, and, and I mean. So they did one thing where they posted this video that basically made fun of people who did things like uh, narrative D D, but it was fine. Uh, they gave you a little video from a person. Um, 
but uh the the point though was they just really wanted a different style of Dungeons and Dragons, right. and they were from you know three point five or whatever, um, and they had some other things in their history. I'm like, yeah, you just want an entirely different style than what I offer. And so, what was cool for me was to be able to go onto like SBG chat and just go, this is what this person wants. Who does who delivers the product? Yeah, exactly. And like claim this person because they were a good player. They were awesome. They just yeah. I was like, you're gonna hate me. Because this is just not what we play at all in my games. Like we yeah. we might spend a whole session in character talking because that's what everybody wants to do. Exactly. Um, yeah. And <laughs> that's and, totally my game too. <laughs> but the whole thing and but but again, that's also because of how we built it, right? It's it, right. it, it became that. And and I think it's so funny. Like I go back, my first games weren't always that. It was probably a little bit more balanced. But my player base now, like I mean, I forget. There was like something where, where where it was like like expectation of like like the expectation is Matt you're going to stream it and Matt you're going to have me all this time and if there like there's just these expectations because that's my community like there's things I can't even do with and get my community players uh, because of what they feel like my the the brand or the product is at this point and yeah. so somebody coming in it's like yeah like I love you as a player but there is this. There is this brand. There's this community. This is how we do it. This is how it right. goes. Because um, you know, I've got 60, 70 people here who are here every week, some five times a week. Yeah. And you know Oh no, they're out know, there. They, yeah, some and, of you and, listening, you're like five times? I have five time players too. Like yeah, <laughs> you, you, you stick it. around long enough, you're gonna find someone who has a ton of money. <laughs> well, and, and they're then, great players. <laughs> and why why that? wouldn't you tell them no? That's not even that crazy, you know, it's, it's cause I was at first I was like, what? Then I'm like, well, you know, do they, you know, you know, if they're one, if they have enough money or two, if they're a single person, you know, right. whatever, like, like what, what I got told for a little bit was like, you know, I'd blow more money at a bar than I blow in your game. Right. And which is better for me. Right? Yeah, exactly. And, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and again, that's just what that's what this person said. No, no judgment right. anybody. But that's what they were just like, which, which am I going to come away? And they said, the answer is I feel a lot more like I feel better to go to my job the next day in a thousand reasons, right? From a game rather than this other thing that I spent a lot of money on, right? That I might go yeah, three yeah. or four times. I'd you rather could be spend like my tips doing that, improving you know? that person's life, yeah, um, in a lot of ways. But yeah, for sure. And I think the demographic generally is obviously older because older people generally have more money for obvious reasons. Um, you know, that's how wealth works. And uh, yeah, just older demographic usually retired or getting there very high up as far as like what they do um I have interesting a bunch of, that's like, not my experience oh really okay yeah. different demographic then okay <laughs> i'll just you know that's i'm well, not that's sure. you, <laughs> right that's yours and that's what's that's yeah. what's so it's like when we were talking the first time it really got me and i I'd actually want to say definitely want to public acknowledge like as you were looking stuff I, I was very interested because you know um you know you had a lot of polish and i'm like you know polish helps and i'm not a polished person and i know that about myself and yeah. so that was well, one thing seen like set up a gf chat we know oh yeah <laughs> yeah you know and so and so but i was like what can i learn from friday's polish because i want to be better you know i want to do what i can and what if it was you know guess what do graphics so they put the polish on for you and um <laughs> but uh yeah. you know and, but and that's the whole thing you learn from people and i think that's and it comes to community, you know, my big thing is you give what you want to see things turn into, right? And so, like, like SPG chat, uh, for instance, like, I want that to be a place where we all help each other. You know, what does that serve? You know, so, so that means if someone, like, kind of contacts me and goes, hey, let's chat and learn, like, yeah, please, like, let's, let's talk. Because I want a community. You know, if I give to somebody else, then hopefully they're give to other people, you know, and, yeah. and, and, and whether... And, you know, and, you know, and, and however that is, like, you know, for, for me, I just don't have, I'm not interested in making something that's worth paying for to sit down and like do like a, a big thing. But like, I know what you do is amazing, you know, to help people out, you know? And again, that's that interest is what fuels you, you know? And so well, I think that's really cool. Yeah. I had this, well, yeah. And I totally want to help people. That's why I run the podcast, but then also like why I post on Twitter and stuff like that. I mean, besides growing my brand, I mean, that's part of my brand now, but um, so it's not like completely selfless, obviously. I'm not, no, like, nothing insane. is right. There's, yeah, there, there, there's oh. nothing selfless, but also nothing's ever completely selfish. Well, it shouldn't right. be right. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the, the ideal is everything is both because I don't, I personally don't think we can ever totally get away from selfishness as right. 
I think it's always yeah. going to be there, whether we have it or not. And you're better off to claim it and know what it is. Right, right. Um, yeah, it's just to understand and be honest, you know. Yeah. You know, have some integrity with, like, your intentions and stuff. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, I found, and it'd be great if there was, like, the the thing that, oh, gosh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to word this rant. Um, GM chat, GM help. It's a problem. So here's what the problem is. Yeah. There are people who should not be giving advice, which I think is very gatekeeper of me to say. Um, but at the same time, like, okay, if I check your profile and you've run 10 or less games, why the fuck are you giving anybody advice? Like, <laughs> like, I understand if you're coming like from like tens or years of experience or whatever like that. But like, if you have not existed in the space and you've just started your business, like you should not be giving advice. It's harmful to people who may be taking your advice at face value and just trusting that you know what you're talking about. Um, so, and, and repeat, even if you're like new and you're like, Hey, I'm just going to repeat the advice that I've heard. That might've been advice that was told specifically to someone to work for mm -hmm. them specifically. So you need to, I, I don't know. I, I get, that drives me up the wall when I see people who are like brand new, who spend more time in GM help trying to feel helpful because it makes them feel good. And I understand why they do it in that respect and i'm not trying to be too judgmental in that but like at the same time spend all that energy running games spend all that energy improving your own stuff instead right. of trying to like validate your existence in gm help um and i get it that obviously i don't want to be the only person that people ask help from but like there's so many good sources of advice that you don't necessarily need to ask me directly or like quote me for everything because there's a lot of people out here who do stuff very differently than me like you do or like hunter does or like eric v we all yeah. run different games or like dev who is like probably the most different than the rest yeah. of us shout out to dev i'm gonna get dev yeah. on the podcast at some point hopefully um who runs from like a laptop in a corner of a desk with like a stack of yerba mates and one in one side is like yeah, like running all these one shots and stuff. Um, but yeah, so I think it's important to just recognize that if you're starting out, like your focus should be on improving your business, not other people's business. Worry about your own. You know what I mean? Like you should be gaining experience so that when you tell people stuff it has real value based in experience and that's why you know i i really struggle with like and i think i have adhd i don't know if i have it or not but i struggle with the signs and symptoms of that so like when people ping me like i can see someone ping me right now um <laughs> uh but when people ping me that fucking like, it distracts me from whatever I'm doing to the point where if I'm doing anything creative, I have to close Discord because, like, people are pinging me. And that's perfectly fine. And it's just, like, a state of how we live, I guess, yeah. nowadays, especially, like, with my business at home. But, like, that's why I have in my profile, like, don't ping. Because when people try to ping me, they will see don't ping show up. <laughs> right. That's why I put it there. It's not to be rude. It's just, like, please no, don't I... ping me because, like, I... you're going to interrupt me. Like, I don't know. And if you're a decent it, it, person, you respect that, right? Like, I remember, like, I was, because I always try to turn that off when I'm replying to you. Because for me, my thing is I never, I, I try, I don't want to feel like I'm just putting stuff in the universe. Like, I'm just telling people what I do. Like, I would go, someone asked a question or someone made right. a thing. And so I hit the yeah. reply. But like, for me, I remember the one time I think I didn't know if I did. I'm like, oh, no. Because, <laughs> and I'm saying that because I do, because, because we're all different and we all have different um things with that you know like my like 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 uh with what i am it's like people pinging me like someone pinged i'm ready to go but that is how i'm simply wired and and right. we're, and someone else is wired differently but and again if you're a halfway decent person you respect that right <laughs> you just go yeah we're all different yeah. and we all we we treat people the way they need to be treated to be the best they can yeah be. And, or and that's, you know what you do or instead of just respecting that you put into your server name please ping because you're so desperate for <laughs> the clout of being understood as a as an expert in this community that you're no. new to that you'll do anything no but... comment <laughs> why are they obsessed with me anyway oh. um 
but I saw uh, that. No comment. Like, oh man. Um, <laughs> Jeez. Um, yeah, I think with the, when you're new DM, I, uh, that is something because I think I think that there is there is a thing where I understand that sometimes, for instance, as an extrovert, I understand that that getting support and being able to talk in a community is life giving, right? And and I think that um, it is. I'll say one thing I had to learn as a human, and I I was able to learn this before I entered pro DM world was the idea of being able to socialize without having to help or or or, or validate or these things right. and what i found was you know the best thing is to to ask for help or go what do you all think about this and 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 it's hard because the easiest way to get someone to listen to you is to try to help them right. and as someone who gets energy from others i will speak that for me myself that is a very difficult thing to learn and you have to care, right? So I have to care enough to go, I don't want to harm people, so I'm not going to talk on stuff I don't know about. Um, and I'm going to... I have to discipline myself this way, knowing that that's really hard, because that's how I live. Like, that's what makes me want to do the next thing, is interaction. So um, that's that's where I, enter, I get my energy from. And especially in a thing where my prep is by myself, that's very important to me so um mm -hmm. i'm thankful for the fact that me personally like you know i have things to say and if there's someone who better like I, I will say like follow friday's twitter because i'll probably rehash what they're gonna say <laughs> and so or follow these other people's you know now if it's community or those things like hey i'll speak on this because i think i have some valuable things to say but um otherwise yeah. like try this or you know what do you think but so I would say as a new DM getting DM chat, you know, as opposed to thinking of like, you know, what I'm not going to do, you know, don't, don't speak on stuff that you're not fully, that you're not confident on, right? Like, or that you wouldn't sell for $200, I would say, or something like right. that, right? Like, 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 in other words, like, you know, stuff I'd say, go, yeah, this is valuable. And if this person follows this, I'm fairly confident they'll do well, right? right? If I say, love your players. You know, get in like, 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 appreciate them. Um, you know, when you're when you're doing your story, think of like, oh, this person's gonna like dig this so much. Like, 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 make it a level. Like, like, I if you follow that and you're able to do that, I know you're gonna do well, right? And mm -hmm. so, so I'll, I'll do that. Now, if you're not able to do that, there's other ways you could do well, right? It's not the only way to do well, but right. I know that you could do well if you do that. And and so even though I'll try to say could. You know, I think if we had like a, a discussion, right, where I was trying, and I've, and I think a uh, Discord thing, you and, he, you and I even had, where, where more or less you indicate I should be careful for things that aren't universally applicable and things yeah. I might say. And I was like, mm. and, and I had a defense, but I also was like, there's a point to that because I don't want to be unhelpful. You know, I want, I want to be a helpful person. And so, um, so yeah, and I think that's the thing. Are you being helpful to the space? Um, yeah. asking for help is being helpful because someone else can see that and go, Oh, cool. That's what I can do. Um, I think certainly doing your research, uh, putting success things, um, you know, but yeah, if you're putting stuff out there that you're not entirely sure of, I don't know sure it of, but it's not tried and tested. Right. You, you know, like, like it's, it's one of these things, like, like it's a point to where, you know, you sit on a hundred sessions of with one person that stayed with you for a hundred sessions or something. Right? right. Like, like, like there's a certain, you know what, this is probably applicable to enough people to share. If that is true. Like, and as yeah. to your point, 10 sessions, probably not like you, you it yeah. could be, but you don't know, like you have no idea. You don't right? know why it's working because right. it could just be other factors. You know what I yeah. mean? But if you've run enough games and you've been around for a while, then you can see patterns. And until you start to see patterns on what actually works by and large for you, then you don't have a perspective. And I point that out like that's what works for you at the end of the day. Just because something worked for you once doesn't mean it works for everyone. It might just right. be working for you because yeah. that's how your brand is or how you've set things up. So an another part of what I think... And this is not to say that I'm like the end all be all like when I give advice and stuff. But one of the things that I'm very careful about is because I do consulting and things like that. And I am out there trying to individually solve people's advice or I mean, like problems that they're trying to um, trying to scale and progress. There's a reason 
why I charge what I charge for consulting. It's because I'm individually solving that person's problem. And I can do the best job in the world and give them the best advice. But that doesn't mean that they are going to solve their own problem, ultimately. Right. Because you got to well, get in there, right? To, to they give have good to do the work. Really. Yeah, they have to do the work. And I think that's... And and it's interesting. I think I saw that that your your stuff there. I was like, that's that's probably even low, in my opinion. Uh, I think that's very generous of, of 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 your rate because if you're going to really get into somebody else's brand and help them see themselves, that is a skill, and that is something that that is. And as someone who basically, you know, did, like I said, ministry. That's what I did. Is a lot of is like I'm not going to sit here. And it probably isn't true of everyone's experience, but I, I am not a person who sat there and just said, wrote answers. I was right. like, okay, let's get into your life. Even what you individually believe about, quote unquote, everything's everyone's supposed to believe because you go here. But mm-hmm. let's get into these things because this has to work for you. I want this right. to be a long-term solution, not a short-term solution. Mm-hmm. Like, um, you know, if I if someone was like, you know, I'm having trouble finding people who don't treat me like crap in relationships. Well, let's figure out what you believe about relationships, first of all, because yeah. let's start with that. I'm not going to assume Damn. you do. Like, and, and, and don't be worried. Damn. Don't be worried if it does, conflicts with, quote, unquote, the right thing because we're sitting in this particular building. Right. I want to help you. Right. I want to help you understand this. And part of that is because I feel like when people really dissect what they know, one, uh-huh. that's the best way to see, oh, I don't even know if I like that. I think this. And so right. that's one thing. It helps people. It helps me the most. But but then and 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 again, that's that that should be rewarded. And so and again, like I'm, you know, I think you you know because because that that's what I would ask if I was someone asked me to do that for them. Hey, come in, I, I, and I would be happy too. But I'd be like, you know, sure. But this is what it's going to cost because that you're requiring. You know, I'm giving you a lot of my bandwidth, and also you know my like, and not just that time, but you know. If I'm being creative for you, there is a creative pool I don't get to use that day, right? And and, it, and it's okay to charge for that. Be like, that's that's you know that's the thing, and um, you know, I think altogether my philosophy has been like, what value am I providing for the amount of work that I'm doing? Yeah. So a majority, because I've done it so for so many people, first at free, just as part of the workshop, and I'm like, I cannot continue this and be free because I had everybody kicking in my door like to get their jump start. And as you perhaps may know, like almost all of the top 10 GMs use my advice for most everything as far as like branding and like marketing and things like that. So, I mean, I have social proof and I just don't have the bandwidth to like do it for free anymore unless it's like this, right? I'm creating content for people to consume out on their own. Just like when I put stuff on Twitter or I make a YouTube video, it's reaching a wider audience. I don't. Yeah, you're have, multiplying your time. Yeah, correct. Yeah, I'm multiplying like my the effectiveness of what it is that I'm doing. And for me, when I'm going in and I'm consulting, that's literally for that one person. So I need to get paid because otherwise, it's not worth my time. Um, and also, yeah. I want to make sure that I'm only dealing with clients where I believe that I can 10x their return. So if someone pays me $175 an hour, which is what I currently sit at, I will probably go up to 200 or 250 at some point. But um, right now, I believe that within two or three months, if they do what I tell them to do and figure it out and put in the work, they will make $1,000 a week. Yeah. And that's just from one hour with me. And now why do I believe that? Because all of the people who I have helped individually like that have gone on to do that. So it's proven that you can do it. Whether or not you can get out of your own way and let that happen for your business, that's a very internal thing. And what we've been talking about a lot on this podcast has been, what do you need to do to make sure that you are successful? I can tell you what the problem is, or I can tell you like what the solution is, but you have to get yourself at the desk or in, in the mindset to actually implement what you need to do. And that's totally on you. I can't do the work for you. Yeah, yeah. That that's a that's a personal um, deal. That's why, like, if if I was, it was it's it's interesting. And and I I felt I I might have said that I think I, I I thought this as a joke. Now I I I think of it as just an honest thing. If somebody was saying like I want to be a pro DM, and I would say if I want to do anything of value in life, I would probably say uh, get a therapist. 
Um, <laughs> I just started therapy. I'm, I'm pro therapy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I mean that because you're bi- like what you just said is true. Your biggest obstacle is yourself. It's the, it's the biggest thing of everything else because clients are out there and money is out there. Um, you know, everything's out there in this world of digital. Like you, you, you can do so much, but you are your issue. And to have someone who's going to, and those are two different skill sets. Like you said, you can hire a consultant. They're going to tell you this issue. They're not going to really be great at dissecting you typically, right? They're, they're, they don't have that. But there are people called therapists who do have that skill set. Yeah. And they charge money too. And so, you know, they can help you understand you and get out of your way. And then someone else can do that for your business. And those things work really, really well. And, and I think that's, because I mean, that's a huge, and it's a huge part of my story. My story was, it was a few months of therapy by the time I started. Right. And the more I learned and I was, I, and it helped me know enough to go, like, I got to start with this. I got to make sure I'm good. Um, yeah. And even that advice, you could take it, you know, and, and, and I do think you should take advice from people who know, but you do have to filter that through if that advice is going to make you feel uncomfortable, don't do it. Is it going to slow your progress? Yes. But yeah. Also, you it'll probably hurt you more if you do it and feel uncomfortable. So um, you have your choices, or you can say, "Let me work hard to get out of my own way." Like so, it all works together, right? And mm-hmm. I, I think that's that. You know, it's it's. I, I think again, you're trying to if you're trying to build something and do something good, therapy is such a, a valuable tool because it it. Um, I can't say enough about it because I think it, it, it lets you see your blind spots. Right. In an amazing way. Knowing yourself is so powerful. Yeah. And that's, I mean, it's funny because I talk to talk about every pro DM, every single one. I know myself. This was for me. This is like, yeah. there's this, it's like a, this constant thing um, of, of understanding who they were. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes being at a job that was killing them and understanding, I can't do this for the rest of my life. And Absolutely. then being able to go, I know what won't kill me. And I refuse to let this DM thing become something that will kill me, even if it means losing a client, even if it means. And you just, you know, you talk to the ones that are at the top, everyone has these stories. And a lot yeah. of them went to a therapist uh, to help understand that. You know, it's, um, I can't. And I have players who, I mean, I tell my players this all the time, they come in and they're like this. I'm like, I'm just going to say this. We can, we're definitely talk about this pregame, but go get a therapist. <laughs> and this is yeah. not a handoff. This is someone who just like, it is invaluable and you're going to do better at life. And, not, and, and, and when I say that, it's really like, you're going to, you're going to love your life more. Um, yeah. Every day. Yeah, for sure. I think, um, Jeez, I sometimes, you know, I get I get totally derailed because like you have that like ministry pace at talking. So like I completely forgot what I was going to say. But uh, so give me a moment here. Decades. I can't help it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Oh, advice. Um, do not take advice from everyone. You need to pick yeah. and choose who you're taking advice from. And you need to actually like look into like, hey, what is this person's brand? So if, like, you were just starting out, obviously the best thing you can do, I don't say obviously, but, like, I shouldn't say it, um, is make professional connections at your level and build off of that and trade seats with other GMs at your level. Learn from them. See if what they are doing is successful for them and why it is successful and try to dissect that. And then if you get the opportunity when you have these other people within GM chat that you want to interact with, you go and join their game and you learn what you can based on their process. And I know a lot of GMs who have personally, just like I have done to you, Matt, that have joined my game specifically with the intent to learn how I run games and why it's successful. And they've taken that back. And then they like sheepishly like show me like, Hey, um, you might notice when I play with them later, like, you might notice that I do things a little similarly to you. And I was just like, well, yeah, that's fine. That's great. Right. Like the, yeah. I wrote up that session zero document because it just made my life easier. So if you like completely copy my session zero document and that's what you actually do, then that's fine. If you put up the session zero document, and then you don't do it. I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? But right. like, <laughs> but they actually like go through it and like, and that's how they organize things. So it's like, if someone has a system or a way of doing business that you want to emulate or like try and um, 
build up to see if you like it, then do it. Try it out. If it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. So, yeah, and that's you know, I, I would say that when I was when I was deciding what to do, I think it was even evaluating whether I thought I could do this. I joined the top games of people I saw. Right, like um, at that time it was by reviews. It's a different now. Those mm-hmm. people got the most reviews, and um, part of that was learning what I did and did not want to do. Right, mm-hmm. and it was also um. I forget whose masterclass this was, but I described the masterclass thing. And somebody, you know, you know, she taught. She was talking about why she was a writer, and she read a book that she paid money for, and said, "I can at least write something this good," you know. <laughs> yeah. And and that was the initial confidence, right? right? And and, yeah. and that's what it worked out for me was, I think I can at least do this. Like I think I could at least do that. That that seems to be close enough to who I am, and I might need to work on a few things, but I can at least do that. And right. um. So, and then you can see what, you know, what worked for me, what I like, what, what I didn't like, what was this, what was this? Like, I'm thinking one thing I joined, I think it was an hour, it ended an hour before the advertised time that it was going to last. And I was really upset. And I put, I will never do this. <laughs> right. I will never shortchange <laughs> players uh, from, from time again. Right. Yeah. I, um, I'm super or not again, just ever, right? Um, <laughs> I'm super guilty of that. I do that. I, that's why I put such a wide range. I put two and a half to three and a half because, like, sometimes the game is two and a half hours long. You know. Yeah. Now I'm much more clear about like, hey, when we're done having table talk, that's when the timer starts. And if our table talk takes too long, then you're getting a two and a half an hour game. <laughs> so like, it's it's spend your time how you want. Um, yeah. But yeah. But- I think that's and I and you know for and I like it's so funny. So uh, if I'm if I'm real real close, like like because I have the minimum time too, I always I'll usually ask because especially if it seems like this is a good spot, I go, doesn't mm-hmm. this seem like where we should end tonight? Or is there things anybody wants to do and maybe somebody wants to interact with an NPC or something and that's that's fine. But like for the story wise, like I think a player missed and they needed their teleport spell to go somewhere. But it also we were just about at time and I was like, you know, why don't we just wait for this other player? Yeah, you know, just like hijacking their spell and right. whatever. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, like we could, but but I mean, doesn't that just make sense to everybody? And but then I always go like, what do you all think? Like, you know, you tell me. I'm I'm you know, it's whatever. And you know, you, usually people go, you know, that makes perfect sense to me. Cool. Does anyone want to buy something? Do you want to you know, is there anything you want to do? And we can maybe you know do a few right. things. And then so it might go 15, 20 minutes after that, but then it'll end. You know, and yeah. it's just I always you know again it's me. I like to return power there as much as I can. Um, but that's also, and it's interesting. I think a lot of the, sometimes when I think of the differences of you and I, so much of it is time zone a little bit <laughs> what? because, well, no, because see, at the end of my games, I literally probably have nothing else to do with my life because of <laughs> my time zone, right? When I'm ending and, and generally speaking, when I look at the, t- what it means for your games, you have a lot of day left when you would end <laughs> your game. I do not like, I'm kind of like, yeah, like I'm literally just like falling into my bed next to my desk at this point. So like, you want to talk about yeah. something, let's talk about something, whatever. Um, I'll, I'll play Hearthstone <laughs> or something instead. I'm good. So, I think but, that's a misconception. I think that's a misconception. But, mis- okay. Okay. I'm but just... I, cause I do run games to midnight sometimes. So I have dropped my morning games. Um, and I, gotcha. except for the weekends. So if I do so run two or three what games... What I mean by that is almost all my games are midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. So oh, you okay, 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 sometimes, okay, okay. that's like my life. So that's oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, because you only run like one or two. Like you only have like one day where you run two, right? Uh, two. I, I have two right now. Two days, so two. Okay. Yeah, you guys run two, one day I run three. Gotcha. Okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah, uh, for me, the norm is like two. And I have put them both in the evening now um yeah. generally so it's a kind of capture that broader audience and it's also to easier to get people consistent what i found with morning games for me at least and i think this is totally a me problem not that morning games don't work for people but my energy is not right in the morning i can have a podcast like we're recording in the morning right i can do this but for me to run a game I, w- I, I don't have the same energy. I don't have the same presence. It takes a lot out of me to do that in the morning. Um, and, I've, and I know that about myself because I've run streams in the morning before. And it was, I hated it. I hated it so much. So for me, it has to be a module for the morning game. Oh, cannot, yeah, yeah. I, okay. I cannot do custom in the morning. 
if right. I'm here, okay. we're doing original homebrew sandbox stuff. Right. I'm like too many factors know. to think about, right? Yeah. yeah, I can't do it, but 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 I, I can definitely go off of adventure go like and even if you want to side quest something that's on the book i can rip off that but right. it has to be off of some type of pre-written structure yeah. that i'm going to kind of go to or that i can go hey let's go with that plot point uh um or, yeah. whatever, or, or, or whatever so so that's my limitation is is that i can't um i think i even tried and i was like oof no 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 um yeah and it, and it, and it really was like i'm not giving the same product and i don't feel good about that um so so i need to be you know, I need to be consistent in what you get, um, and and that was yeah, my limit. I think yeah. that's a that's a valid and important point um, that we're talking about. Is that it's just kind of circling it all back to feeling good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now that I'm reflecting on this truth bomb that you this this truth grenade you've dropped in my brain, I'm looking back to all of the games that didn't survive and just the party fell off. It was almost always games where I was not as into it and I was not as invested in. When I am invested and I am like giving people everything, they are more likely to stick around. Whereas like I can still be a great GM, but like not be presenting as well as I normally do. And people can feel that whether or not they know you from, you know, uh, a different medium or whether or not they... I, I think it's just like a feeling, right? Yeah. A feeling that exists in the ether that's transferred through the cable wires. <laughs> um, yeah. And... Well, yeah. You can tell with somebody's that they're best. Like you can see, like I, th I think, especially if you've been around people enough, you know, you're, you've lived enough life, like yeah. someone's either there fully or they're not. And you can tell when someone's engaged. Um, and, you know, I mean, I remember I had a, a one game who very frankly, because they care, because we had built a relationship, said, hey, we feel like you're not. We don't know if you're running too many games or whatever. And that was a really big, like, okay, that's that's the one when warning I get. When your that's players the, are coming yeah. to you with their health and, concerns, yeah. Yeah, and they came very lovingly, but it's like, this is the one warning I get to change something or, or probably lose this game. And I love the game a lot. So what I realized was... For me, I just need a three-hour nap in the day. Like I was like, that's what I yeah. need to do, and I need to guard that with everything I have, and realize mm -hmm. that is money in the bank. That nap, um, in a way, like like that is just super important. Um, you know, it could have been yeah. changing the games, could have been a few things, but that's what it, it ended up being. Um, where like no matter how much you know my daughter gives me the doughy eyes, I have to go, honey, I'm going down. Like I am, I'm, like this yeah. is what it is, and we can spend. Or we'll play Monopoly in the morning or whatever. Um, yeah. So that's just, but, but yeah, feeling good, being your best. I mean, that's, it should, be, it's just so funny. I think we want to do obvious, but it wasn't obvious. I mean, I yeah. had to go to someone to figure, to really get that into uh, my own place. And I, it's funny because I think in my career, just in general, I think a lot of people try to tell me that. And I, I, I never listened, I think, until I really had, one until I got to just very bad place and mentally, and, uh, and, I'm, and I've shared this actually in my tweets. So I don't mind, but like, like I was, I was like, I was like essentially suicidal, and so it was a real big place where I had to realize that I mattered, my health mattered. This right. I can't give endlessly, um, mm -hmm. physically, or I won't be. And so that was a huge revelation. That sought to therapy. That person helped me out, um, and you know. Part of the therapy was medication as well. I always want to kind of give yeah. that. Hopefully no one ever poo poos that because man, people got to live. And so, um, right. you know, and from there, like now things are tons better. Like that's not even in the scope anymore because of all the work that I've been able to do uh, through that. But again, that is put in the work. And so it's funny, like, uh, you know, one thing that in life tends to be true in my experience is people need to get to that point of pain to make change, right? So yeah. as, a, as a GM, like I it's think, so like people biblical. like this is so biblical. I, Keep I going. <laughs> I find it to be true. I find what I just said to be true, though. I think I think I think people would agree, right? This point of pain, mm -hmm. and it's it's. But what I'd say though is is as you know things like this this podcast and and everything else we do in GM chat or whatever. So much of it is you know people will not listen to that point of pain, which is why money is such a great place because it it to, you know it has been. Studied, shown it, it. It's painful to spend money. Um, there, yeah. there is pain involved, and so if someone is feeling enough pain to spend money, they tend to listen. 
and and that's what's so so important and that's what kind of like what actually makes pro games amazing um because in my experience like i think you know i see that on twitter sometimes people go oh pro game it's never gonna be like your home game i'm like no it'll probably be better <laughs> um, <laughs> and, yeah. I, and 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 i and, and and I, and I say that only in that in my experience, and I don't want to say it about my home games. I actually probably mean that more by my game store games where no one really knows each other. Like home game, if you're with your friends, it probably could be a better game. But in really in your in the game store ones, because everyone there has has sacrificed something to be there, right? Mm-hmm. They've sacrificed this this thing. And um, you know, for some people, time would be a big enough sacrifice, but not everyone values mm-hmm. their time the same. But most people value right. money. Right? right. And right. so so that's a that's a bigger but yeah, when I say the point, it's usually it's like as a person, as someone who's going to do this, like, are you at the point that you're ready to really like do what it takes, mm-hmm. um, and and just decide you are like like it was really, again for me, my situation was just either I'm doing this or I have to do something I'm probably not going to love as much because I can't do what I'm currently doing. I need to switch, right? And and this was my first choice, so I want to like kill myself at my first choice to make this work, and I and I was willing to put in. Yeah. The work to do it. Um, and I mean, and that, and it's so funny because I remember my, my therapist going like, be wary, you might bottom out on energy, was very worried about what I was doing. Mm-hmm. At the same point, understood I couldn't do what I was doing. So they were very much like, I get it, be careful, let's talk about what you're doing and help me balance that the best I could. So so that's what a good therapist would do, right? They won't just go, so, you know, they're kind of go, okay, I kind of get your situation. And so let's right. talk about the best way you can do this thing that's made, that I necessarily wouldn't really recommend, but let's do it the most helpful way possible. Um, yeah. Or, or, can, or, the, can, or can't recommend professionally, right? Because there's things right. that they have to say potentially because you right. still know you the best. I mean, even when you have everybody else. Yeah. And I would say that just talking about mental health and like taking care of myself has been something that I I think during the summer mostly like because I ramped up so far uh so quickly it was very difficult to make that adjustment and I don't recommend anybody ramp up as quickly as I did to go to full time you need to do it more gradually and have a better safety net and then of course I've got all this other stuff going on in my life um in addition to like the business stuff that I have going on so I have just accepted now that I need to take mental health days sometimes and um my players know it and I've expressed it sometimes, like, I'm taking today off because I need a mental health day. And I do it sometimes once a week. And it's a different day every time, sometimes. It, it just it just depends. So I get, uh, like, disappointed and upset um, if, like, players don't make it or they make other plans or whatever. And then, like, I feel guilty about, like, charging them. But, like, at the same time, like, I know that at some point during the week, I am not going to show up to a game and be very good. And I just would rather take the day off. And so that's what I do now. So I have that sort of policy. Like sometimes I just ping people and I'm like, sorry, I need a mental health day. And a lot of the time it's really just, I didn't get enough time over the weekend, um, over the weekend to really reset and uh, take the time off because I have so much other stuff going on um, that I haven't given myself enough actual rest. Um, And that's, oftentimes the case on like Tuesday or Wednesday, I will take those days off. But yeah, sometimes it's Thursday. You know, I took a, I had something happen like where I was, um, and it wasn't even a bad thing. I remember it was specifically, I found out that we had secured the deal with Anya, the former director of games at Kickstarter. And I started like weeping profusely (laughs) and like just out of pure joy that we were like that said to me like we're going to be successful with this all this investment and this is something i'm putting 10 to twenty thousand dollars into of my time and this is where all my money goes from this professional jamming thing that's not paying bills so for to have that happen like right before i was running a couple of games i was just like i showed up to my game still fucking crying (laughs) on camera and i was just like i'm sorry i just you know this happened i'll run this game um and, but I canceled the next game after that because mm-hmm. I, you know, I needed I needed that time to just like let it happen, just let it be, just be with myself and um, just acknowledge, you know, good things are happening. So I think the the opposite can be true. Um, I think it's more difficult to do something like that if you are just starting out, which is why I recommend people don't scale up very quickly. Mm-hmm. 
Because if you need the money, right. you're not going to take care of yourself because you don't have That's the true. option. That's you true. don't have, you have to show up every single time. You got to keep your other job. I'm sorry. Like you ha you yeah. can't scale up that quickly if you want to take care of yourself, especially because of the immense mental load that GMing full time takes. So yeah, like I, I didn't scale. I didn't. I didn't switch jobs until the DMing exceeded the other one by enough of a margin, right? Where I could uh, do vacations and days off and that type of thing. That was my, and I did two till that slash. Um, my health was just. It, it just took too much of a toll, and one had to go, too. Uh, there was a little bit of that as well, but it was, like, yeah, if you want to just kind of go, that's it, I'm done, let me pro DM, that's probably, I wouldn't recommend that, uh, and I don't talk to pro I DM. Did I really did it. I don't oh, recommend it. it. Yeah, you did it, you <laughs> don't recommend it. it, right? I don't, and, no, no, I yeah. was part-time from January, so I started seriously in January. I think I had run, like, six sessions of Lost Mind the previous year in 2021, and then I, like, went back to, like, my stream shows, and I was doing that for a while until uh, we had that break with Empire of the Ghouls between season one and season two. And then I started, like, I didn't like the job that I got right after I got out of the Marine Corps. And I was just like, hey, let's see if this can scale. So then I was running, I was working full time. And then I was running part time games. And that was still like three to four games. And then as soon as I hit five games, I was making just as much GMing as I was at my job. And I was like, Fuck this job. And I quit immediately. <laughs> so I, you know, I didn't do it the best way. However, um, I recommend, obviously, people, if they can, um, squirrel away some money for a while. And then, like, you know, have that safety net so that if yeah. you actually scale up, it's done in a steady way. It's done in a healthy way. And the thing about this business also, it's like high highs, low lows. And if you sure. don't have that safety net, like, it's going to hurt it's going to hurt a lot. And yeah, so I wanted to stress yourself months. out and burn out. I think, I think I wanted six months of expenses. I think mm -hmm. I got two or three before I had to go. Yeah. Um, I think, I think that that point where I'm like, um, yeah, I can't do this. I, I need to only do one. And obviously, I know which one I'm going to do. It's going to be the DM. And, um, but that's, you know, my goal was higher, but at least I had something, right? To where, and I think I think the wisdom of what you were just saying, and and this is what I was what I was able to do is early on. If you're not dependent upon things, you can be yourself and who you need to be as a DM, and not take DMing things that aren't good for you and where you're not at your best because you're not dependent upon that income. Um, you can you can kind of be like, okay, whatever. Like I'm not going to be this. I'm not going to be this. This is and and you can build your community effectively. Because even if they have to, you know, I had some very early on who would like leave for, you know, three, four months and come back. And some of them now yeah. are four, four a week gamers. Right. Like now, if I was pissed off and couldn't control myself, right. And, and, and part of that is not being dependent upon it. Right. Part of it right. going cool, you know, bye. And, 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 and good. And what's going on? Well, I'm just not doing well. Anything I can do, like, let me think, you know, whatever. Oh, it's this. Well, here's this. You know, anything I can do because I'm not dependent upon you so right. I can be kind and a human to you because you're not a number to me. You know what? I'm going to tell you a secret. Um, I don't think too many people are going to listen to this at this point because my platform isn't that huge yet. But if, I, if you're a player in my game and you leave my game and I tell you, you always have a seat at my table or like, I, you know, I'm sorry to see you go, you know, you, you can always come back and like, I'd love to play with you again. That means I actually want to play with you again. If I don't say that, then I could like, we didn't, we just didn't connect as much. So I'm okay if you don't come back. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. because I, I need to make sure, and this is part, we're going back to therapy. I yeah. need to express to people my feelings for them. And especially in a business like this, which is so people facing, I need to make sure and let them know how I feel. I don't need to let them know that I didn't care for them. You know what I mean? Right. That's unnecessary. Yeah. If that were the case, I would probably ask them to leave the table, which I do with some people because I'm just like, we're not vibing. Like this isn't working. You're draining my energy. Like I don't tell them that, but like, that's what it is. Like we just right, don't yeah. get along. 
And if you're you have someone that just doesn't gel with your style or like yeah. you don't enjoy and, running the game for, and that sounds selfish, but it isn't because if your energy is drained, you're not giving it to the other paying players. Right. Yeah. Right. You're you're actually speaking up for everyone at the table when you mm -hmm. address someone who's draining your energy. Like it's 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 personal and it's like again, I think as we're talking about, it's it's a selfish and selfless thing. It yeah. is it it is both at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, I a hundred percent agree with what you just said. Uh and I and in secret, I kinda do that too. It's 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 I will not say <laughs> I'll say do anytime. the code. <laughs> yeah, I mean I'll say anytime when I'm like, yeah, probably not. Um like like it's you know, it, it's I'll say things I mean. I hope you find the DM that fits you. And I mean exactly. that from my That's heart. That's a nice thing to say. And I and, do and, and mean that. And I'm yeah, like, I mean I'm that not from my heart. I know I'm not yeah. that. And, and, and it's cool. But, and I do mean that. Like, you're like, I don't, yeah. I'm not against you. Like, you're fine. It's just that we're not fine. Right. There's a difference <laughs> there. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, we're not you know, pals. <laughs> yeah like it's it, yeah. or you know maybe we are pals but we're not dm we're not we're not we're not uh in oh, the game, that's true. you know I, I do highly value and like appreciate uh some people i would never play D, &D with right <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know yeah. And it's okay like you'd be an amazing person but that does not mean we're yeah. good playing games with you know it's just right. not yeah, how yeah. it works you know i think uh you know it's it's so funny with that and uh yeah and i you know it's you know, one thing that uh, I think I, I, I just wanted to share with people is because one thing that, that I learned early on with D&D is you're trying to make your game stuff is trying to help players understand that, you know, D&D isn't one thing. And, and, and especially if you just listen to like the thousands of podcasts out there, it's definitely not one thing. And I always go back to like, um, I always start to play Monopoly one way by my dad. And then I played that way with uh, my now wife and uh, she almost threw the box at my head because that's not <laughs> how she ever played Monopoly. Yeah. Um, and my dad would say this because she doesn't play the right way. But um, I don't think that's true. <laughs> what you learn is that it's a different thing. Monopoly to her was right. a thing that everyone sat around and did to have an excuse to not have to do anything else to socialize. Yeah. Right. That's, that's what, how she grew up. We, I grew up with a hyper competitive person who was like, you murder the person you're across from. <laughs> and that's how I was taught to play Monopoly. And, and so, yeah. so in other words, in order to successfully play games with this person who I loved, I had to yeah. learn to play games differently. And she had to learn to try. Cause her thing was, I don't even want to try to win. I'm like, if you don't try to win at some level, we can't play a game. Yeah. However, I can definitely tone down and and not try to murder you which and is own you right which is They're, super funny because of how different your gming style is where you're so enabling and like right. you're so rule of cool that's so funny that you're the monopoly brings out the blood first <laughs> yes because who i was raised with right and, and and there's a few things it took my dad like i just experienced my dad it took a long time he wanted a sports player wasn't a sports player yeah. i was in theater and all these things and he I don't get it because I think there's there's a, there's an offensive place that some of the stuff he was good. He's an amazing person, but whatever. Um, well, he did not like that I was in theater, but mm -hmm. um, the point being that you know, same by the way, but... yeah. <laughs> and there, you know, it's it's so interesting. But the the point is 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 when you get around a table, you need to make sure everyone's ready to play the same game. Yeah, absolutely. And, and when we're talking about players who win, right? Yes. And when we're talking around people who like get one and whatever, it's because they came to play a different game. Yeah, exactly. Right. And that's that's where a lot of the strife comes from, and what you have to navigate as a host and a GM. And this is a great point for us to. I know you have a hard stop, and I'm trying not yeah, to go over it. This is, is a great play. This is a great point for us to to stop. Um, if you got anything that you want to share or you want to talk about. I know you're doing you're doing the 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 Western themed stuff, yeah. and we have links to uh, Balos. Uh, did I say that correctly this time? I'm sorry. Yeah, you got um, it. Balos, um, you know, both Twitter and uh, you know, you start playing games account and whatever link that or anything that you'd like to talk about. I'll give you the floor for a little bit here. Yeah, yeah. I think honestly, the biggest thing I follow that link to Twitter. That's where I put a lot of stuff up. Um, I uh, I'm lo I, I will share other things as I get more. I think as I as you heard early in the Western thing, I just I'm not comfortable with a lot of stuff on it yet because I know it's not right because I haven't had enough people input into it. Uh, it's still in that early phase, but yeah, I'll put a little bit of stuff from that, and you can see I'll push things from my um, game 
the the minis and stuff to twitter is a big thing and then uh, of course um i start playing games if you want to play a game i know it's a little self-serving but honestly like uh whether it's Friday's game, or you go to that recommended list, like, look at the top five, whoever's in there. Probably the top ten, honestly, at least. Um, play games with them. Um, you know, uh, you know, especially one-shots, that way you're not, like, a ghost or whatever. But, uh, you know, um, learn learn from that. And I think that's one of the best things. I know it's like, you know, give us money. That's not what we mean. It just is honestly... <laughs> You talk to everybody, more business. <laughs> right? But you talk to everybody who's got in that. They all say the same thing that they went to other people first, and they and they, yeah. and, they, and, they and they looked at it. And I think there's a reason why it worked that way. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, you look at that stuff and uh, reach out and see what's going on. Um, you can always. I think it's always good for something like this because this podcast is a point in time where I think most of everything we said was true. Uh, but, but things change, you know, and I think yeah. following us on our socials, you get what's most recent in our thoughts, uh, and a lot of times too. And I think that's so important because we're, uh, evolving learning people as well. Wow. That's powerful. Uh, also I'll point out that if you want to play with me as a player, I am playing in Matt's Dragonlance game on Friday. So maybe you want to join that because we're going to go to war. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Thank you for that. I wasn't going to do that. I was like, that was your, <laughs> your core card to share or not. No, I, I, <laughs> yeah. If you want to play with me, that's the game that I'm playing in. So, um, and I'm going to get my, my mini, I'm going to put it on my desk right here. Yeah. Uh, but, Fridays, uh, are you still, you're still doing it, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Take, still doing the minis. Uh, I am yeah. literally waking up early to play with Matt. I'm suffering for <laughs> this art. Okay. But, um, yeah, yeah, so, and then also, Matt, I know, uh, runs really great Xander games. But that's it. Um, thanks for listening. And, uh, yeah, y'all take care. Uh, we'll have another episode, I suppose, next week. Also, you can, I guess, pay me money on Patreon, but these are all free for now. <laughs> okay, yeah, goodbye now. Hey. Bye.